guys, so today's video is going to be myths and misconceptions about hamsters. So the first myth is, any seed mix is fine for a hamster. And the truth is, hamsters just like any creature have specific nutrition needs. And not all hamster foods are made equal in this regard. The first thing you must be considered is whether you want to use a seed mix or a lab block as your hamster staple diet. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Quality lab blocks provide complete nutrition in compressed blocks of food and do not leave room for hamsters to be picky. However, they tend to be rather boring for hamsters. Seed mixes provide variety and if they are mixed well, they also provide complete nutrition. The downside to seed mixes is that unless you leave the food until it is all eaten, then the hamster can be picky and might not get all the nutrition the mix provides. Some things that you need to look for in quality hamster foods include the protein percentage is between 17 and 21% for hamsters over the age of one year. For younger hamsters, pregnant hamsters and nursing hamsters, a higher protein level is better at about 30 to 35%, while the fat content is between 4 to 6%. You do not want a food that has a lot of sweet products, such as honey, especially if you have a species of hamster that is prone to diabetes, such as the Chinese Russian Campbell Dwarf and Winter White Dwarf. Specifically with seed mixes, you want a mix that is well balanced and isn't overloaded with fattening foods such as sunflower seeds, peanuts and pumpkin seeds. If you have a diabetic prone hamster, uh, then you will need to watch that there aren't too many of sweet foods such as corn, corn products, peas, carrots and fruits. If your hamster is a diabetic, then you may want to make sure that these foods are picked out. Since picking out too much of the food from the mix can show it off balance, you want a mix that doesn't contain a lot of these foods. So the second myth is there are more than five domestic species of hamster. And the truth is there are many different nicknames for hamsters these days. Pet stores and some breeders have been claiming they have a new certain a new certain hamster that is new, rare or better than your average hamster. For example, some of the common names include the black bear, teddy bear, blueberry, panda bear, and there are just so many more. However, there are only five species of domestic hamsters. They are the Syrian winter white dwarf, Russian Campbell dwarf, Roboski dwarf, and the Chinese hamsters. Nicknames are made up for hamsters usually to make a certain colour of fur type seem rarer than the other hamster of the same species. If it is rare, if it is rare, then they feel like they can justify raising the price. These are just nicknames though, and do not in any way make the hamster any better than any other species. So the third myth is, Roboski dwarf hamsters cannot bite because their mouths are too small. The truth is, any animal can bite and the d Roboski dwarf is no exception. They have four sharp ends of their teeth that are quite capable of drawing blood and pain despite their small size. Don't be fooled by their small st stature. If they feel they need to defend themselves, they most certainly can. So the fourth myth is, if I feed my hamsters meat, will they become cannibals? Or if I feed my hamster meat, will, meat, will it want to eat me? The truth is, hamsters are actually omnivores, and this means they can they can eat both meat and vegetation, just like humans. In the wild, along with the grains and plants, hamsters will also eat insects. They are capable of eating cooked meats, plain, with no spices or flavors too. They will not become cannibals, nor will this make them want to eat you. This is just one of those urban myths that really doesn't have a reason for being around. So the fifth myth is, Syrian hamsters can learn to live together. And the truth is, in the wild, Syrian hamsters only come together to mate. They are solitary by nature and do not take well to having a cage mate. Just because two Syrian hamsters have not fought yet does not mean that they all fight at some point. These fights can lead to injuries, expensive vet bills, suggest hamsters are even dead. The reason is, th there is no reason to tempt fate and try to go against their nature other than for selfish desires of wanting to keep them together. While they may be upset or confused after being separated, within a day they will be back to their normal selves without a thought about their old cage mate. In fact, you may even see them come out of their shell and that they are no longer forced to live in a unnatural social environment. So yeah, that is today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. I just want to say really quick that all the information mentioned in this video is from the Hamster Hideout form. And I have the post linked in the description box below because you should definitely go check that out because it is very, very informative. So yeah, that is today's video. I also just want to say really quick that I'm going to be doing a, like, I guess a routine kind of, like a schedule every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I'm going to be doing my videos, um, some more videos on the guinea pigs, you know, my dog, hamster, cats and everything like that. So if you have any requests, just comment below. So yeah, that is it. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe. Bye!